Okay, so welcome back everyone once again for another SnowRunner truck review. Today, as promised, we're going to complete all the scouts here with the 6x6 and the only 8x8 scout that is in this game. Now, as previously mentioned in my 4x4 scout review, there are some important considerations to um, think about before you actually look at this video. So go back, check out that um, those important considerations on the 4x4 scout video, but just know, however, some of those will not apply here to the 6x6 scouts because they are just separate vehicles in themselves. So we're gonna jump in here and I'm gonna show you these last four vehicles in my garage here and we'll do a quick review on them. And then as promised, uh, the next video that I will be doing will be a scout tier list, so look for that in the making. Alright, as you can see, here's the garage view. I have my four scouts here, the Apache, the Yar 87, the Resvani Hercules 6x6. Um, this is a brand new scout that just came out here as of phase 8. And then we have the Earth Eater, as I would like to call it, the Tuz 420 Tatran and we will go through all these real quick and then we will conclude. So anyways, let's start out here with the Apache. So the Apache has the AAT 8V52 custom engine. This is shared with the uh, Chevrolet uh, CK1500. This vehicle weighs 2.6 tons. Um, it is the lightest of all these vehicles you see on your screen uh, that I just showed you. Its max tire height gets to 44 inches. It can get mud tires uh, and chains as well. Very nice. It does only have a stock suspension. I usually run the SnowRunner gearbox on all my scouts because, well, you're always slowed down to a crawl and why not be able to have um, more low gears to kind of tailor your wheel spin because of just how light these vehicles are and how hard they, the terrain is on them. Anyways, you can get the standard autonomous winch. It gets a nice uh, tall front facing snorkel, which is really, really nice. Its fuel tank is 95 liters. That equates to 26 gallons. And something also that's really nice about it is it has these roof rack and the trunk supplies as well. And actually for the, the roof rack, you can get 200 liters, 54 gallons, 300 repair points, and six total tires if you put all of these on here. Now, I think this is going to be needed because a couple bad things about this Scout um, I need to mention. And the first thing is, it does burn a little bit more fuel than I would like to see. I would say it's around um, the Lodestar values of burn values. So you're going to need all those uh, fuel and repairs as well. Um, being a 6x6, especially this one, a huge downside as well that people just really do not like about this vehicle and there's another vehicle in here that has uh, the same issue actually there's two more vehicles that have the same issue here but something that really just turns people off about this uh, vehicle is it cannot tow any trailers at all not the big trailers not the scout trailers and this i believe hurts its value um, to the snowrunner community because well giving it a scout fuel trailer gives you more room to scout longer term you can use all those other scout trailers as well and the apache sadly does not have it however something really good about the apache is its balance is pretty good it's deep um traversing mud is actually better than the resvani hercules it's pre a pretty good scout overall um, another thing i do need to mention is all these six by six scouts have switchable all-wheel drive and then they always they have always on diff lock Another really bad thing that most people really don't see here with the Apache, however, is whenever you toggle off all-wheel drive, usually you would think for a 6x6, because we always play the bigger trucks, that whenever you toggle that off, your front tires stop working, and you basically become a 4x6 um, or a 6x4, where your back two axles will fire and your front two axles will be dead. However, Whenever you toggle off all-wheel drive on the Apache, the only axles that are actually firing are the front. And you can see that this is pretty much weighted in the rear. So you're losing so much traction whenever you're using the Apache without all-wheel drive. Um, and I think this kind of hurts, hurts it as well for me personally, because I talked about how vehicles that have always on diff lock, 
I really love to turn off my all-wheel drive to reduce the penalty of all-wheel drive um, consumption, uh, the consumption deficit there. So knowing that this vehicle does eat up a little bit more fuel, I would like to see these two axles actually have fully powered and the always on features instead of the front axle um, diverting to that. And I'll actually go in here and show you. So here's has always on diff lock. So whenever you stop the switchable, when you turn them off, these two front fire instead of the rear. And I just would like to see that. But overall, I think the Apache gets a bad rap. Um, however, it, it is a very, very handy scout. It's pretty good. It does have a lot of uh, fuel and a lot of repairs. It can basically almost fill itself up twice with its roof rack. It has a good bit of repair points as well. Um, its engine power sits around 60,000 torque. Um, I would kind of like to see that a little bit higher, especially because it can't tow anything. However, realistically, if you're not towing anything, why do you need so much power for? You're just going to generate more wheel spin because it is a lighter vehicle. Okay. Now, let's move on to the revered Yar 87. This is has this has been a, a highly requested vehicle on my channel for me to review. And here, here it is, the Yar 87. This is a vehicle a lot of people really like. Um, I actually really like it too. Um, there are some very unique things about it that, um, as a population of, of whole in SnowRunner, um, this vehicle is very pleasing to drive. So, first off, it shares the same engine with some other vehicles, like um, I believe it's the Con Sentinel and the Con Marshall as well. The Azov AM4 4V160, it has 90,000 torque. I usually always run the Snowrunner gearbox. It doesn't have a race suspension. It has pretty large tires for a Scout. I use the TM2s because um, I think they're, they're the best it has. It also has a chained option, which is really nice as well because a 49 inch chain on a Scout, um, yeah, in, in uh, those areas where it's very icy, comes in very, very handy. Autonomous winch, no brainer. Tall front facing snorkel, in case you wanna dive in some water there. This vehicle does weigh 4.7 tons. So out of the six by sixes, it is the heaviest of them all. Um, it still weighs less than uh, the four by four uh, Lodestar uh, by 0.3 US tons. This roof rack actually gives you um, 120 liters of fuel, 32 gallons, 300 repair points, and four spare tires. So it's really nice and handy to come with that, that fuel tank that really is only 110 liters at 30 gallons, so you can fill yourself up again. A good thing about the Yar is it's a very, very fuel efficient, um, especially for a larger Scout, which is kind of baffling, and having a 6x6 six six fashion with you know 90,000 torque, you would think it would burn a little bit more fuel but it actually doesn't burn a lot of fuel at all it's, it really has a um some of the best range uh ranges and fuel burn values that i've seen uh for the power the weight etc another thing i do want to mention is these massive tires as mentioned previously on the con marshall these are the same tires that get these can traverse the deepest mud in the game and you can just throw yourself down with the SnowRunner gearbox and crawl through it. Not many scouts can do this. And this is why I think that the, the SnowRunner community as a whole really like this vehicle because to be honest, if you can get through the deepest areas in the game by just going really slow and get through it with a scout vehicle, it is really, really nice. So it does have that benefit of having those because these wide tires are very buoyant. So it allows you to sit on top of the mud and you don't sink in to its frame. Um, despite it not having a raised suspension option. Something I would like to also mention is whenever you toggle off all-wheel drive, this does have always-on differential locking. And whenever you toggle off all-wheel drive, uh, the back axles do not fire. Actually, it's the two front axles that fire, which I'm not actually complaining about because I think it's not that bad. It actually works out to its benefit because this is a pretty balanced scout. Um, it doesn't, it's not really prone to tipping over. Uh, I think it's pretty decent when it comes to stability. There are some situations where it will tip over a little bit more opposed to other vehicles. But as a whole, this, this vehicle is very, very solid. It's a vehicle that you can use kind of as a workhorse for a scout. It can, it can tow trailers and it does it really, really well. So I think as a whole, 
Overall, the Scout 800 definitely is one of the more balanced, powerful scouts in the game that you can use. Okay, moving on here, this is a brand new vehicle from Phase 8. This is the Resvani Hercules 6x6. Uh, this vehicle just came out a couple days here, actually five days uh, ago, in the release of Season 8, which is Grand Harvest. So let's dive in here and talk about this. This has the HET 8V6 two uh, tango engine. I believe that's a 6.2 turbo. The capital T means turbo. It shares this engine with um, other smaller scouts. It has 120,000 torque, so it's actually the most torque out of all the 6x6s um, sitting here. So yeah, um, it has a good bit of power to it. I always use a Snowrunner gearbox. It does get a raised suspension option, which it definitely needs, because if not, you would be stuck with 37-inch tires. It does have these Resvani um, exclusive tires, unlike the unlike the actual Wrangler and I believe the Renegade. It does have a 39 inch custom tire. I believe the Renegade cannot get them whenever you raise the suspension. You actually have to go to like a mud tire to get them. But anyways, having a 39 inch mud tire is really, really nice for this vehicle. I've gotten by with using the actual Resvani tires. They work pretty good. And you'll probably see in the video here, I have been using them and they've worked really, really fine. So um, I've scouted the whole area in the first map in phase eight and this vehicle worked pretty darn good. So let's move forward. It does weigh 4.4 tons. So a little bit less than the Yar. Max tire size, like I said, is 39 inches. It's fuel tank is 80 liters at 22 gallons. And then we'll talk about some of these other things, has these front facing snorkels. I like this one right here because it actually sits on the roof and there's like, it just blends in. I don't know why, but I think it looks good. So if you want to take a plunge in water, you know that you can do so. Now, I think a huge highlight of this vehicle, and this kind of rivals other vehicles like the Ford F750, which is the only vehicle that has more repair points in its roof as a whole, roof, truck, everything as a combo. The F750 has more. However, this vehicle does have quite a bit. Um, just to give you some numbers here, it has, if you get select all three of these right here, this will give you four tires, um, 450 repair points, and then 320 liters of fuel equating to 86 gallons. Now, just to compare that, the Ford F750 gets 500 repair points, then it also gets 330 liters equating to 80, I believe it's 88 gallons. And I believe it gets more tires as well, but it gets close to F750 levels, which is legitimately a walking repair refuel station in itself. Um, so some things I, I would like to mention about this vehicle is it does have differential locking always on. And whenever you toggle it off, these back tires will fire. I love that. I think that's great. Um, if you're in a situation where you don't want to use uh, more fuel, you can toggle that off. This thing is really, really good on fuel. It is a really, really stable Scout. Its suspension properties are so good. Um, I was driving this thing at speed, and unlike all those other Scouts, um, they just get really, really squirrely at, at high speeds. And I can, I can say by driving this, it's actually really nice to drive. It's a, it's a fun drive. It's really, really stable just because of its suspension properties. Um, I haven't tipped over a lot, especially with this uh, these roof racks on here. So its mud performance is a little bit lacking because of the smaller tires. And I believe the Yar definitely will do better. And also the, um, the Apache will outperform this. So in some areas you have vehicles that are going to do better than this vehicle. But I think overall this, it's a really fun drive. Um, however, another huge, huge issue that people are going to have with this vehicle is it cannot tow trailers. Um, so there's only one 6x6 Scout that can tow trailers, and that is the Yar 87. Um, sadly, I wish this vehicle and the Apache could. I think it would really boost them, um, boost their popularity. So anyways, that is the Resvani Hercules 6x6. All right, so finally, last but not least, this is the final vehicle in the Scout class, and it is the only 8x8 Scout that we have here. This is the Tuz 420 Tatran. 
Uh, I nicknamed this vehicle the Earth Eater. And as you can see, it has a custom paint job here, which looks awesome. One of the better custom paint jobs in the game. And we're gonna talk about this vehicle uh, in a little bit of depth here in my experiences. So let's jump in and talk about this. This vehicle does have a some uh, some bad things about it that you're going to have to consider. However, I believe this vehicle has so many things going uh, right and just so many things that are outstanding about it that its downsides really are, are minimal So um, compared to how good this thing is. Now, first off, we'll talk about this engine because I think I want to mention some things about this engine before we move on and talk about the other things. So this engine gets 200,000 torque um, in comparison to other vehicles like the the Tega engines, I believe they're at 205. The Azov engines are at 210,000. So it rivals some of the better, more powerful engines in the game. Has the most torque in the, the Scout class by far. Um, this engine is the India Mike Zulu 12 1000 Tango engine. Another thing that is amazing about this engine that I do want to mention is it has a damage threshold. Okay, this vehicle, now I'm going to break this down. This vehicle can take 300 damage to its engine. That is its damage tolerance to its engine. Now, this says that it can have 99% of its damage threshold, which means that this engine can take 297 damage to its engine before the engine is considered damaged. So when an engine is considered damaged, you have things like engine responsiveness is down, uh, fuel consumption is up, the power of the engine is decreased. So whenever it hits 297 damage to a 300 damage tolerance engine, which is this engine right here, this vehicle still retains 100% of its power. There is no other vehicle in the game that comes anywhere close to that. And that is one of the most insane statistics I've seen. So thank you, Vlad Vulcan, for that information. I will be having a video um, about um, some similar things with this vehicle this engine and other engines as well um, just for some good information there so thank you for that Vlad anyways moving on this vehicle does weigh 15.4 tons this is more than every vehicle in the highway class every more than every vehicle in the heavy duty class and more than most vehicles in the off-road class as well and so, uh, more than some vehicles in the heavy class too so it's a very very heavy vehicle um, it does get the advanced special gearbox um, coupled with that engine and 80 liters or 80 gallons coming to 300 liters capacity it actually gets pretty good fuel consumption I don't really um, compare this vehicle to being an actual scout when it comes to consumption because it is an 8x8 so I compare it to being more of an 8x8 and I, so I'll compare its values there um, it does have amazing range with how great this thing can travel through elements and we'll talk about that here in just a second. So it doesn't have a, sp a race suspension option. No big deal. It plows through things. And the reason it does plow through things um, because of these tires. They are the best coated tires in the game for off-roading. Um, they only are 47 inches. However, they run through mud. This thing eats mud for breakfast. Um, it is quite amazing to see this thing go. It'll max out in, in fifth gear on the event special and just run through mud. It is arguably one of the best off-roaders in the game. Um, there are a few vehicles that can probably uh, tackle terrain better in really, really deep conditions where you where this thing gets bogged down because as you can see, it doesn't have a ton of ground clearance, right? Because it doesn't have a race suspension, doesn't have massive tires. 47 inches are still pretty big for a scout though. Moving on has the autonomous winch, which makes it even more powerful. Has a roof rack that has 120 liters, 32 gallons, four spare wheels, and 150 repair points so you can repair yourself on the road. Um, not a ton of uh, repair points and fuel here compared to some of those other trucks we just mentioned, but still, it is respectable. So some things I do want to mention about this vehicle is, and this is something that is a huge downside, um, but I believe it was for balancing because of how dang powerful this thing is. Um, it can't tow trailers. You just, you just can't do it. Um, it doesn't have a snorkel, so its engine is actually in the rear of the vehicle. So once that gets submerged, you will start taking damage to your engine. 
However, we just mentioned how uh, tolerant its engine is, so that is another good thing that you can keep in the back of your mind whenever you are taking damage. You can understand you can take a ton and still have amazing performance. Another thing, it doesn't have chain tires. This is the only option um, for tires. It does not get chained. However, I've used this thing in every single um, snow map in the game. Amor, Yukon, uh, Cola. It's done really, really well. You can find ways to use it without having chains. It's a, it's a really good vehicle. It doesn't have a really sharp turning radius, especially when you're pulling vehicles. Um, this thing is a really good rescue vehicle. However, whenever you're pulling vehicles or trying to pull them over or just drag them back somewhere, because you're pulling from the back with a winch, the vehicle will rock upward in the front. So you will lose some of your steering capabilities. This happens a little bit with the Yar 87 um, in some ways when hauling uh, scout trailers, but I don't think that's really a big deal. You can always get, away, get around that stuff uh, just by good driving, right? Also, I wanna mention this thing is super stable. As you can see, it has a very wide gate. It sits very, very low, very low silhouette, and it is one of the best rescue vehicles in the game, one of the most stable vehicles in the game, uh, one of the best off-roaders in the game. I cannot say enough good things about this vehicle. I probably could talk uh, for a few more minutes on this vehicle just being, uh, getting me through things, and uh, especially places like Amor and Northern Aegis installation over there and all those places. Well, I've leaned upon this vehicle in my early game a little bit too much. I have branched out and used other scouts just because this thing really does make the game a ton easier. So if you're having trouble with scouting or you know just need a vehicle that is a solid performer, I believe you will not be disappointed when using the 420 Tatran. So anyways, guys, that is the 6x6 six six, um, vehicles, the Apache, the Yar, the Resvani Hercules, and finally the 420 Tatran, which I believe is the best scout in the game. Currently, there is no other. This is the king. So anyways, some things you will see from me in the future are some reviews on the Phase 8 vehicles that will be coming up, and then also the scout tier list will be coming up in the future as well. But until then, as always, God bless and stay upright.